Once again, my name is Drew, and today I will be walking you through a bit of Stronghold Kingdoms. The first two times, we talked about a more of an advanced tutorial. We talked about defending and attacking a castle, and the cards that goes into a, to about doing such things. Today, we're going to be starting from the beginning, and I'm going to show you how I usually start a new game world. Now, as you know, when you join a new game world, your account... Uh, researches and gold and faith points and everything from the previous game world that you're playing does not transfer over so you have to start new and really it really depends on the game world that you start on in order to see uh, what you should do now in an already established game world what you want to do is you want to get the scouting first so you can get the resources out there and a lot of the quests now are scouting quests so it'll allow you to do quests as well to, to get up there in, in both honor and resources because a lot of them do get wooden stone early on. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on World 5 and um, you, you'll, you'll see it pop up and I'll go, I'll go between here and the, Wiki, the Wikipedia page and things like that to really show you the differences between the beginner's page and what I'm going to show you here. Now first, you can see that I don't have a village in this world, so what I have to do is I have to place it. Now, I kind of have a notion on where I want to go based on where I am in World 1 and, and other worlds. So I'm going to click Manual Village Placement, but otherwise you would click Random Village Placement. And what this does is this places you randomly on the map. So you, you don't really have a choice. You just click Random and it puts you in the best place. Mostly, Most likely it's the least populated space because that's why they put you there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click manual village placement. And as you can see, all of these all of these green dots are somewhere where I can go. Now, I've never been to Isle Man. I kind of wanted to go there, but I can't now. So I'm going to go to Anglesey Island, in, which is in Wales. And the reason I choose an island as opposed to in inland is because it's I, I think it's just a lot more segregated to where the resources and the prices for the market and everything is going to be quite high as opposed to say for instance I would have went over here where I can see there's a lot of people and there's a lot of scouting and, and so forth going on so here it doesn't look like there's hardly anything which means I have the island to myself that's always a little bit of strategy that you have to do when looking into placing your village now up here you can see the quest icon flashing because I have yet to look at it and making contracts introduce myself on a parish wall so before I do that, I already have max, no, I don't have max stock, about 4,000 out of 4,000. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, since I don't have the research for faith point buildings, usually when you start a new village in an already established world, that's what you want to do. But now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, get a couple apple orchards, get my food production up. That way, my people are not dying, and I can tax them, and I can... I'm gonna tax them for now until I can at least you know have have a little bit of a little bit more gold. So now I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna to go to research. Now the thing I always start out with is scouting because the the things you can do with scouts as opposed to say wood research or or stone production research is say for instance I needed food. There's my cheese. There's my other cheese. There's actually a lot of food resources here, so I won't need to. I won't need to uh, really put up my food production because I have so much scouting production. All right, so that keeps flashing, I guess, until I get it. So since there's so much food, I'm not going to trouble too much on that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, place a. Well, actually, you know what? I forgot that I had a two-day premium token. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this premium token, and you get this when you get when you finish doing the tutorial which I did off screen it was kind of you should be watching this video after you've done a tutorial so the, the great thing about the premium token is you are able to move buildings now here I, I don't really like lowlands to begin with because the wood and the stone is too far away and from everything but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to where it is right here it's a, it's a bit closer to everything and um, it's not too far over from where it was, but as you can see, it's closer to the iron, which is down here. And you'll get a bit better production while still having good production in wood and stone. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to see where the closest place is to place the wood. And I'm going to do the same thing for that. Another great thing about the premium token is you can, you can um, 
you can have a building queue, which a building queue comes in handy when you're out scouting or doing other things. Another thing it has is a is a research queue. Now here, now it it doesn't look like I can I can get the the scouting like the speed down yet. Um, yeah, it looks like I need to be level three, which it looks like I need to do some quests. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, this is a new system that was recently implemented, and it's it's pretty straightforward. And I, for one, love the quests. It starts out uh, having a player do little things like introducing yourself to a parish wall. There's another one where it's I have to uh, send a player a message, and it really it really involves player interaction as as well as player activity because there's a lot of scouting ones as I said so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce myself on the parish wall and as you can see I'm, I'm in a uh, house 6 parish uh, was Benlick which I'm gonna have a fun time pr uh, pronouncing some of these names especially that one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on the parish and this is the parish wall as you can see here there's no one that's talking so I'm just gonna click So there you go. I just said hello, and um, my quest should be completed. There we go. Now you get a notification here, but it does not complete the quest completely. What you need to do is you need to click here and click complete, and then collect. Now if we go back here. It has already given me my 200 wooden stone. Now I'm going to go up here, and I remember seeing a quest for dairy farming. I don't think I can do that yet. So, I need the honor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tax, I mean, bribe my peasants because I need the honor to rank up. I didn't uh, foresee that happening because a, a lot of a lot of the research, if you haven't noticed, if you go here, a lot of the research is based on your rank. Like, I can't do dairy farming until I'm ranked 2, I can't do fishing until I'm ranked 12. That's what that little shield above in your research does. And if you've noticed, I keep switching back and forth between the research tree and the research, what's available for me to do. Now, the research tree allows you to see the whole entire thing. And what you can do is you can even scroll out. All you do is you, you uh, if you have a scroll wheel in your mouse, you just scroll up and down. This, this allows you to go in and out like that. And you can see that um, I can't do plow, which is this one, until I'm level two. I can't do like bread making or or vegetables until until what is that nine? Yeah, nine and then thirteen. So it's it's quite a ways to go. So what I'm going to do is um, I have apple orchard uh, going now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit more wood and stone since I can't do the scouting until level two either. So. Normally when you do the tutorial, I did a tutorial in another world, which usually when you're done doing that, you you get quite a bit of honor, but I don't seem to have that honor in this world. So we're just going to make do with what we have. And let me see. All right, so yeah, I have one level into stone and forestry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually scratch those. I'm going to go right to tools. Now another moderator by the name of Grand Emperor Kurtz he says the best thing to max out first is the tools and at first I didn't really see the point in it but then after actually starting out a few times on different worlds I can see where that comes in. You save a lot of resources with maxing your tools right away so let's see I'm gonna I'm gonna place there I, I can place anything else yeah, I'm gonna place a hovel to where the hovel, the, the closest you get, the closer you get to the village hall, which is this building here. The, the better the production is for the hovel and the honor goods. Now the difference for, for say, the stockpile goods, which is including weapons, the closer you get to the stockpile, the better the, the, the production. It's the same thing for food items and the granary. Now the one thing that people always get mixed up is, here, I'll go here, what is it? Yeah. Under buildings, okay? Now, banqueting. I, I get this question a lot. The hunter's hut, it does produce venison, but it must be placed near the village hall in order for it to, uh, to produce a lot. And you cannot eat the venison that's used for banqueting. 
So we go back here, and those are all the banqueting buildings, which you can unlock with further research. And then you go back, and there's weapons buildings, which again, you don't have an armory, but the armory, the stockpile is more or less the armory. So what you would do is you would place the stockpile, the, the weapons right next to the stockpile. And it has a pretty good production rate. I think without research, it's six weapons per day. Uh, I could be wrong. I... I haven't had no research in a while. Um, so, and then we go back to this. Now, starting out, what you want to do is you want to always get a liege lord. Now, if you notice, this player right here is a prince with 12 villages. He has five in the parish that I'm in, and he's also the parish steward. So, what you can do is you can actually click the mail icon here, and then. Uh, send him a message alright now when you send him a message I should have waited for the tutorial I mean for the quest to do that but um, I wanted to show you really what you should do a lot of players ask who should be my liege lord what is a liege lord a liege lord gives you honor per day based on his rank as opposed to yours he gets to place troops in your village which allows you to use them for defense. You cannot send them out, you can only use them to defend. And when you do this, he can attack from your village as well. So if say for instance, um, I don't know what the war situation is uh, in, in World 5, but say for instance House 6 was at war with House uh, 11 up here, the gray, the gray House. If I was, say, right here, and I had a House 6 Liege Lord, he was invading. They could raise my village, and it has happened more times than not, that they raise the, the vassal's village in a war zone so that the player cannot send out attacks. Now, that usually doesn't happen, but a lot of times it does because players are scared of what, say for instance, he is a prince with 12 villages, um, he has quite a few quests and achievements, so he's probably a quite a good player. So they are probably scared of what he has in your village, and they don't want that hitting an ally of theirs or you know an, an enemy of this guy which isn't good at all so um, it looks like my other research task complete and I'm three honor away from from ten honor being able to rank up to level two and then I can do a couple more quests for you I'm gonna do the expanding knowledge next which is research dairy farming um, as soon as I research that I'm going to place one and then from there you can really see so here I think I have I mean, bump up the food production and then ale. I, I don't think. Yeah. Ale, it really doesn't do anything because I don't have ale. Um, someone once told me that even if you have on times four and it still gives you a bit more production, as you can see there, it doesn't. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm messing with the rations a little bit. This is this is how you get more popularity to your, to your village. You can put the bribe all the way up, which is what I have here. That's negative 20 bribe, which that negative 20 is per day. And then here I have times four food, which as you can see, I'm eating more food than what I have. So pretty soon I'm going to run out of food and it's going to it's going to be pretty red and it's going to give me quite a low uh, bonus. So here, keep going back and forth. All right, so yeah, I did that so I can get a little bit more troops to the castle and from there... I should be able to do a scout, which I should have did earlier. Alright, for the sake of testing, I'm going to turn off my industries, which you should never do unless in, in an emergency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my wood production, and I'm going to get a scout. Now, scouts early on are extremely slow. So what we're going to do is I'm going to scout this just to show you how long it takes. It takes about 8 minutes, 56 seconds. Now, in that 8 minutes and 56 seconds, it's going to take a very long time, but it looks like I'm, I'm ready to rank up. So I click here, and as you can see, the icon changed to where it's a, it's a little circle with what is that, like an up icon. And then all you do is you click this button right here to rank up. Now, as you can see, I'm level two, which is a bumpkin, good for me. I'm going to go right over here to farming, and I'm going to ex I'm going to do the quest first. So again, you click, uh, you just click the icon with the little check mark next to it, and then you click dairy farming and in two minutes that should be done now in the meantime a lot of a lot of times players in chat which if you didn't know 
you know, I'll, I'll go through this first. Now, a lot of players ask, how do you donate to a parish? Now, it looks like all of these are just weapons building, so I won't even be able to donate to this. That's not good. Alright, so here, you can see that he's over donating, most likely to for the quest. So, what you want to do is, now what I did was, the, my parish, wasn't I wasn't allowed to donate any wood or stone, it looks like all weapons buildings, okay? So what you want to do is then, your parish capital, and I believe your province as well, let me check. Yeah, and your province as well, has guilds too. But, what I did was I went to my county, which is Anglesey, yeah, oops which is Anglesey. And then I clicked around for a village that allowed me to donate wood, stone, iron, or pitch, because that's all I have right now. Now, if you click here, and the village or the one that's donate resources to your parish capital, that one, you can do it to your county, your province, whichever, as long as you donate to a guild within a capital. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to donate 1,000, because you have to donate at least one packet. Now the great thing that they added was this little thing here. Alright, so that's exactly one packet. I'm going to click send. Alright, and then we'll go back here and I should have it. I guess I don't have it yet. i got to get a couple more levels. But, um, so I've, I've, I've donated to the parish, to the county, and when it comes to that level of, of, the, of the ranking, I should already have it checkmarked. So, 40 more seconds for the dairy farming and a lot of people may ask why dairy farming why apple farming what's the difference between the two a lot of times your your production is higher when you have more than one building and uh, the food eaten per day the the number that it increases in your popularity depends on how much you eat now I don't know oh yeah popularity here it goes alright so with two different food types you have um, on times one it's 11 for popularity, times two is 21, times three is 31, times four is 46. So with one food type, times four is 40. Now with two different food types, times four is 46. So that means with if I would have a dairy farm for instance, which I could place now, I'll place that there, and now what, what happens is if they're both producing enough to stockpile, I'll get six more popularity, so I'll be at 127 then. So my quest is completed. Accept that. All right, gold hoard. Gold raise in 24 hours, 100. Now, okay, let me accept that one. A, a lot of these do take uh, quite a bit of time, especially since I just started out. Um, as you can see in the research, I don't think I can do. Yeah, I still can't do the extra. The, the extra scouting ones, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's do Arts. Arts allows you to... Oops. Arts arts allows allows you to get more honor per day. And what this does is it, it goes... If you click here, right here. This, this, is, this is what it affects right here. Your honor per day, depending on your multiplier. Right now, it's it's uh, 121 and the multiplier is 24 which that's everything with arts research Paris bonus and all that so that's the honor that I'm getting per day and it's about 2900 so 2900 and that, again that's per day you can break it up per hour to see your hourly and you can also break it up per minute to see your minutes and seconds as well alright so one thing that I should probably should have done is enclose the keep now I don't think I have enough wood. Well, let's go ahead and I'm just going to close it up so uh, I don't get the the negative bonus anymore, and maybe I'll get a bit more of the honor per day. So now, as you can see, it's pretty simple. All I did was I put the, the gatehouse in the back. And the reason I put the gatehouse in the back is it doesn't need to be in the front. You can you can go back to my other video on that one. So. Alright, so I've completed that quest now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click complete. Alright, now chainmail. This is introduce yourself to another player using in-game mail. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, he has a leash lord, the player that I messaged last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click him, and he's a prince with 13 villages. Now, I'm going to send him a message as well. 
Now, there's no reason to really be scared of messaging players. Um, a lot of players are friendly, and even if they aren't, there's gonna be, there's always there's always that that one in a hundred that's gonna be mean to you, even when you're starting out. If you message me in game, um, I'll put my my usual player name in the description below, and if you message me, I'll I'll always reply back pretty quickly, and I'll be definitely glad to help. So. Alright, so that quest is completed. Now, this is going to take a bit of time. I'm going to stop it here because, uh, like I said, starting out, you always want scouting so you can scout resources and say, for instance, I needed stone now. There's a stone resource stash here. So, scouting is really what you need early on. Going, building on from there, what you need is you need a military aspect, which I don't really do honor goods. I, I, depend on my on my military research to really get a lot of to, to get a lot of my honor so from there um, we can go back here to the to the actual Wikipedia page now the wiki is a great source of information now say for instance I want to become a pair steward and I want to see how to do it productively what I do is I can just click here steward now it has a great search function to where what makes a good steward this is a great guide written mostly by a player by the name of Waringer he is probably the best parish steward in the game he can he can max any guild and he knows which guild to max within a within a short period of time um, him and I work together on this but again it's just me picking his picking his brain getting all the information out here um, and as you can see on the sidebar there are a lot of pages and a lot of information so if you ever need if you ever qu have a question go here there's always something to go and the the basis of this video was really to go over the beginner's guide I think I went over pretty much everything except for the tutorial um, one thing a lot of players do ask is what is this number current points now the thing about that is it kind of says it here the number of points on the leaderboard the leaderboard points are broken down uh, like this. Each village hall that's one point, you get that automatically. Each hovel is four points, and then you can go down here, and it gets a bit more with uh, with like castles and you know cathedrals, which is a faith point building. And uh, you get you just get points that way. There's really no other way to get it. And from there, I'll end it with with the chat and also the full how to do the premium token so here you can see this is global chat all I did was I click the icon up here and you can see there's definitely diff a different chat rooms based on my area and there's two global ones which is help and global chat now it doesn't look like there's too many people on let me go ahead and introduce myself alright and again most most players are pretty friendly in the chat and if they aren't there's most likely a moderator around again if there's someone in uh, world chats being a bit obnoxious send me a mail uh, but most players are pretty friendly I noticed that going through the chat rooms that even players that um, were asking completely new questions without even looking at the wiki page or the beginners uh, guide they were extremely patient with them and helped them a long way now um, the, the, like I said, the wiki page is a great source of information. I suggest reading it to anyone who wants to know anything about the game. It allowed me to expand my knowledge within the game. And I can't really explain this in no less than four or five hours with the, with the source of information that's in here. So, now, as you can see here, it ends with the premium token. You can have the building queue, or the research queue the building relocation which I showed earlier and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click log out and as you can see you have auto trading, auto scouting, auto attack and auto recruit now if you're a higher ranked player in a war you don't want the auto attack or auto scouting or auto trading because what this does is it allows people to see when you're offline but for the sake of testing I'll show you how, how it works now um, say I produce an excess amount of iron in this village I'm gonna click auto trade iron now the thing about this village about this little meter is it does this 100% doesn't mean trade 100% it 
it means keep 100%. This is what I like to say that this little number here means, is that's how much you keep. So I want to keep about 20% of my iron for for normal uh, weapon making purposes further on the line. So I click that and then that means it'll keep 20% and trade everything over that. Now the thing about auto trading, it goes out every, I believe it's every two to three hours or three to four hours, something, something like that. And it's based, everyone's will go off mostly on the same time. And you'll see your auto scouts, auto traders and auto attack everything will go out at the exact same time which makes it easy for people to see when you're offline now the auto scouting it just the auto scouting I can't move that but the auto scouting what it does is it it scouts resource stashes within your parish now it doesn't send out a single scout to each to each resource stash it'll scout the resource stash nearest to you if you have more than one village in the parish it'll send it to multiple resource stashes depending on your location and, and where the stash is auto attacking I've I don't recommend using it I uh, I've never used it but I've seen videos of people that have and uh, say for instance I wanted to attack wolf layers when that time came around when auto trading auto scouting and everything went off it would use all the troops within my barracks that aren't located on the castle and send them out to attack the placement I don't know the exact science behind it but again, I've seen wasteful catapult attacks, and it's, it doesn't look like it's worth it at all. It's much rather look at one of my earlier videos of how to attack a wolf layer. It's a lot more efficient, lose a lot less troops. And then you go here to auto recruit. Now what this does is, if you have, uh, like say for instance I do here, you have your, your uh, population timer on times four, you're going to be going through a lot of troops. What you want to do is, you want to put that... Uh, you want to put this on the auto recruit because that way when all your auto scouts auto, auto recruit auto trading goes off you can recruit uh, troops now the norm is to put it on peasants when you put it on peasants what's gonna happen is it's you're gonna recruit peasants which is I believe it's only what three yeah three gold per peasant and now when you get online you can have an excess amount of peasants if you should have the other ones researched but you but you'll have an excess amount of peasants all you do is you disband them and you get the troops that you want it's a lot better than than waking up and having 350 archers that you don't want you wanted some pipe in or some catapults thrown in there it's a lot cheaper just to do peasants this is the one use of the uh, the premium token that a lot of the older players use or the more advanced players because a lot of them it's easy to build armies this way because if you have your taxes or your bribe all the way up what happens is the the peasants allow you to build armies overnight and it's a lot easier and people can't really tell when you're doing it so that's really the one perk to the premium token once you're a higher rank but until then these are definitely great for extra money and getting that extra 500 honor for the resource stash that you uncovered uh, while you were sleeping um, once again I speak from the mind of a war oriented to where I don't want people to see my auto attacks going out and knowing when I'm offline and if I'm offline that way they can attack me but early on I'm only a bumpkin I shouldn't I shouldn't have to worry about that and I don't think I would until I'm about a night or so now one of the things I'm going to do is um, I've ca I've collected quite a quite a bit of of uh, documents here now this is a tips and tricks put together by a couple players and their information it's uh, a couple of the information is kind of out of date it's just mostly numbers like you see here 23,000 faith points 3,500 for 15 I believe for 25 it's roughly 5,000 uh, per day for faith points with the prince and then uh, how to make 22k per day per village it's, it's really tips and tricks um, the amount of honor it costs for all the extra villages um, I'm gonna link them down below and then also there's a research guide again compiled from many different things that I've learned and people have given me over the time um, it's really going through each each research and telling the exact pros the exact cons and it's more or less more information than what you would get on a wiki but it's pretty 
it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy to understand. Now, the reason you see it split up into like part one of three, part two of three, I usually send this to people over in game mail so that they can read it a bit better, but I think it's better if I just host it. And like I said, I'll put the links down in the description. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the beginner's tutorial. Again, if you have any questions, there's always chat where you can go in here and you can talk to people. There's uh, the parish wall. A lot of people don't talk on a parish wall, but what you can do is you can always message your parish steward if you want something or I don't know there's there's always plenty of different ways to interact with people and there's always gonna be someone out there who's willing who's willing to help you you just have to you just have to go out there and reach because if you don't try then you're you're not gonna see anything about it so at least try and I guarantee you'll find someone who will help you along the way alright so again, this has been true. This has been a sort of beginner's tutorial. Um, I wish I could speed up the process a bit and show you a bit more of the uh, the scouting, like the speed and everything. Now you see here I can do scouts too, which I probably should have looked at this before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the research queue and I'm going to fill it up with the horseman, which is the speed of scouts. Now when I get back online uh, later on today or tomorrow, uh, most of these should be done because as soon as this one's done because of the queue and again because of the wonderful premium token what happens is I can now go offline and I don't have to keep clicking research it'll do it automatically but I keep trying to leave and they keep trying to pull me back in so what I, so I'm gonna end it here um, again this has been Drew um, at the sort of beginners tutorial if you need anything message me in game or um, send me a message in YouTube and I can definitely help you with anything that you need. Alright, have a great day.